let's get to it. No aging quarterbacks on Sunday night in Philadelphia. Jalen Hurts taking on Cooper Rush as the Cowboys try to squeeze just one more game out of their backup before they put the ball back in the hands of Dak Prescott. Prescott obviously says he would have been able to play last night. He probably thinks he would have been able to play week two, only six yeah. days after surgery to repair the broken bone in his thumb. I love that confidence that crosses over into delusion. That's the way you have to be to thrive in the NFL. The Eagles with the 20 to nothing lead, and then it felt for a while like I was going to be the lone wolf. I, I Well, I was. That I was going to yeah, be vindicated were. by the Dallas Cowboys, that maybe I'd get a bottle of Johnny Walker Blue directly from Jerry Jones' <laughs> private stash as the reward. But it was not to be. The Eagles, no. to their credit, and this is the hardest thing to do. We really didn't need to see that. I just said it. But there it is. There's the photographic proof. Me down in the corner, all alone, and uh, yeah. Losing your religion. But you know what? You know what? If I hadn't taken that bullet, and it had been Eagles all the way across, the Cowboys would have won, and we all would have looked like fools. So you're yeah. welcome, everybody else whose name was on that, including America, because uh -huh. if it had been all Eagles, you know that cosmically it would have ended up manifesting itself in the Cowboys completing sure. what they started. And I, I got to give the Eagles credit because you can win different ways, as we heard Kevin O'Connell say at the top of the show in relation to the Vikings. But for the Eagles to be up 20 to nothing and to feel that it's falling apart, the momentum completely swung in the direction of the Cowboys. To hold it together, put it together, and take it down the field and score the touchdown that put the Eagles up by nine and essentially slammed the door. I know it wasn't over, over at that point, but that ended that sense of, oh no, here come the Cowboys. It's going to be 31-20 before we know it. That was a great drive where they just kind of calmed down and they forgot that it was all falling apart and they focused on the task at hand. And it's not the easiest thing to do when you feel like you've gotten to a point in the game where you can't do anything right. It all falling apart seems like a little bit strong, Mike. I mean, it was not going well for the Philadelphia Eagles in the second half, sure. But that's kind of the type of games that they've played, right? I mean, even last week, you look at what the Arizona Cardinals were able to do to get themselves back in it in the second half. And frankly, they should have been able to tie it if they had a kicker other than Matt Amendola, who frankly, I'm not sure why they turned to him for a second consecutive week. But Matt at the same Amendola time, catching a stray, but go ahead well yes you I never know, know who's gonna catch a stray on monday morning i did not have really matt amendola don't. on the bingo card well sometimes you know what people just they come up in my mind and that's exactly <laughs> what had to happen right there but you know what the eagles i mean we keep talking about them as this most complete team right now and i don't know if I look at the the Chiefs and Bills game, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, and I still feel like those two teams are actually very complete. But if you look at the NFC, yes, this is the best team right now in the National Football Conference. Oh Christ, that's is that actually what it's called? Is yes, geez. yeah, yes, it why, is. Why do All you right. got a problem with that? Well, I mean, you see, you, I don't know. You correctly I identified just, it. It was just a weird brain thing that just it felt very wrong in the moment. And, you know, you said a couple of weeks ago that even if something feels wrong, I got to just push through it. So yes, I should have done that. Yes, yeah, I know. You should. Regardless, the Eagles look great. And they are a great team. And when you have a, two receivers like A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and they are making plays as they did on that drive that you were talking about, it makes you very hard to beat, right? Because those two guys are at the cusp of elite. You know, I don't know if I want to call them elite receivers quite yet, but I don't also don't know if there's two other receivers that I would rather have than those two guys based on their combination of speed, physicality, what they can do, the plays they've proven that they can make. So Jalen Hurts and those two dudes, it's hard to beat them when they have things going and they have things rolling like they did on that drive. And the way that I was selling our game, Eagles-Cowboys, pitting number one versus number four in the all-important and always binding PFT power rankings was to say, hey, look, Chiefs, Bills, we know both teams are great. Eagles, Cowboys, <laughs> we don't really know. And especially okay. with the Eagles, like Demarcus Lawrence said last week, 
We don't know how good Jalen Hurts is because he hasn't faced the Cowboys yet. So the Eagles get the victory. They move to 6-0, and oh, which is incredibly difficult to do in the NFL. To win six yeah. and lose zero. Whether it's yeah. middle of season, end of season, start of season, six in a row is difficult. The teams are packed together. So we've seen different ways to win. We've seen grit. We've seen toughness. We've seen resilience by the Eagles. And now we see their 6-0 and for the first time in 18 years when they made it to the Super Bowl with a receiver for whom they treated, and it worked out pretty damn well that year and that year only with Terrell Owens. Now we have A.J. Brown. Brown not having that same tremendous statistical impact, but they don't need him to. They're still 6-0, and and they made it to the Super Bowl that year and obviously came up short against the New England Patriots. But this is a very good Eagles team, and they're five years removed from their own Super Bowl win, but the team is completely different, and the bottom line is, Miles, they're winning. And they're winning because they're balanced. There are few teams in the NFL now that have balance. It starts with the lines. Great offensive yeah. and defensive lines. And then yeah. the back end on the defense is great. And the skill position players are great. And Jalen Hurts is a franchise quarterback. At least he's becoming one before our eyes. I know he's not going to be Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes, but he's going to be good enough. You don't have to be those guys when you have the rest of the team because those guys allow you to, to go a little bit cheaper and maybe make some mistakes with your draft picks elsewhere because they're always going to bail you out. You don't need to be bailed out by the quarterback when you're solid across the board, and that's what the Eagles are. Oh, but it's, I mean, you, you put it that way. It's kind of the same way that the Eagles were built in 2017, although with very different players, except for the guys that are still there. We are talking about the Jason Kelseys of the world, Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox. Those, those guys are still there, but – you have right now what's a very good offensive line and they lost two really real big starters for them the left tackle and their right tackle and they were still able to compete obviously lane johnson going out really changed the game and the complexion of that thing in the second half for the dallas cowboys where they were able to start generating some more pressure with micah parsons because when we look when your right tackle who is as good as johnson is is not there then that is going to make a significant difference but to get back to what you're saying yeah it's it's, it's the same sort of formula where you have guys that are very, very good across the board, and it starts with that offensive line and also on the defensive line, and you can generate pressure with four, and once you can do that, then it really allows your secondary to do all kinds of things that make things tough on opposing quarterbacks. Look, they made Cooper Rush look like a backup last night. We saw the limitations of Cooper Rush, right? There are plays out there that Dak Prescott's going to make that Cooper Rush is just not going to do because he's a backup quarterback. And the thing that Cooper Rush did for weeks and weeks was manage the game well. And people talk about that like it's such a dirty thing. Well, you have to manage the game well to win it, right? You got to get in and out of the right plays. You have to deliver the ball on time and on target. And when you're able to do that and you're able to stay ahead and the defense is playing as well as it has, that's why the backup quarterback can win games. But when you get off to a a slower start and the Eagles are able to generate pressure and then they're able to generate takeaways, then that's where you see the limitations of having a backup quarterback play in there. It's not going to be the same as having Dak Prescott in there and saying, okay, Dak, you bring us back. You make sure that we're going to be in a good position to win. It's just one of those things he's not really going to be able to do with Cooper Rush. Well, and when you are a team that is trying to continue to win games with a backup quarterback, you have to minimize mistakes. And we saw the mistakes conspire and combine to put the Cowboys in that 20 to nothing hole. We saw the Dante Fowler offside on fourth and short inside the 10 the interception by Cooper Rush on the next drive. And then that moment, that weird, inexplicable moment where C.D. Lamb dives for a first down and everybody thought he had gotten past Mm. the marker Mm -hmm. before his elbow or his knees struck and his elbow and forearm landed on the ground before his knees. But at that point, the ball looked to be far enough for the first down. And the Cowboys rushed to the line to call the fourth down play. They seemed discombobulated. They had no inclination, no indication that they were going to actually 
challenge the ruling on the field, the spot of the yeah. ball, and rarely can you reliably challenge a spot because usually it's a cluster of bodies and you've got different frames of reference and what kind of view are we going to have? But it's almost like it didn't even hit Mike McCarthy's radar screen. It's like he wanted to rush to the next play so he wouldn't have to go through the mental gymnastics of considering, should I exercise my prerogative to challenge this? I don't even want to make that decision, so let's just move on to the next play. The whole thing... And look, when you go back to a game, you pick out five, six moments that come together to influence the outcome. But that, that, and they're lucky it was only a touchdown, a field goal, excuse me, not a touchdown that came out of that when they handed the ball to the Eagles at the Dallas 35. But that was just weird. That was just one of those weird moments. And I think that's what made it so stunning that the Cowboys found a way out of this hole that they deliberately dug for themselves with a big-ass shovel. And that <laughs> moment was was indicative. They were, like, determined to lose the game. And I think that's what made it so jarring to me when they finally wake up and start scoring points and get it down to three. And it makes it more impressive to me that the Eagles were able to pull the pendulum back in their favor when the momentum had completely gone to Dallas after Dallas had done everything they could to just say, here, Philadelphia, we think, you know, you should you should win tonight because it's a better story if you win because you've had a great sports weekend in Philadelphia, yada, yada, yada. It just – it was – that was weird, and, and it all – seemed so weird because of the way that that moment was handled, where you throw the red challenge flag, you're getting your first down, you continue that drive, and maybe, you know, maybe it's not 20 to nothing. Perhaps not. It was one of those moments where you think about processes and it sort of was like, okay, the Cowboys had predetermined that if they had gotten to a certain spot that they were going to go for it on fourth down. And when you do that, you want to get to the line because it keeps Philadelphia in that same personnel grouping. And you want to make sure that you're trying to catch the defense off guard a little bit. But when it's that close, then there should be some sort of mechanism where somebody's like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, they, they, we should maybe challenge this because it really did look like Lamb had stretched the ball over that line to gain um, on that dive. So it, I understand what happened and why it happened. But yeah, you can see it right there. Look where his elbow is down. Look where the marker is at the yard line. I mean, it's right at the stripe, and you can see that the football is right at the stripe. So that obviously would have been somewhere where McCarthy could challenge, and then they could have gotten that first down, and who knows, maybe they have to punt after the next series, set of downs anyway. But it's still maybe one of those game-changing plays. You're right, Mike. There are sort of five, six moments that you can point to. That was definitely one of them. One of the things Sean Payton always says about replay review when you're the coach and you're the one that's got to make the call as to whether or not you're going to find the red flag. And as we know, as Jeff Fisher proved, sometimes it's not easy to find the red flag. But first, you got to find it, then you got to throw it. Peyton says when it's clear Jeff and obvious. Jeff Fisher catching a stray. When it's true, well, I got more. When it's truly clear and obvious, you're hearing all the voices in your headset of challenge it, challenge it, challenge it, challenge it. When it's close, it's crickets. Maybe that's right. the ultimate litmus test. They are the 50 drunks in a bar that Mike Holmgren once spoke of. They are the ones who fill the coach's ears with challenge, challenge, challenge. And my guess is Mike McCarthy was hearing crickets when he shouldn't have, that somebody yeah. should have seen, oh, yeah. man, C.D. Lamp got it, and they should have been screaming to Mike McCarthy, find that red flag and throw that red flag and extend the drive. So, yeah. again – you can never – well, no, I, I'm not going to say never. Sometimes something like that happens right at the end of the game, and it's much easier to say that's why. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.